Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So today, well later today, we get a new content day and inevitably we will have to choose where to jump in first, in between the side event, monthly event quest, or in this case, additionally, we are going to get the beginning of winter of woe. And because of that, uh, Kabam has made a post here basically highlighting the schedule and putting everything in writing and we're gonna take a look at that today as well as Kabam has given us the objectives that we will have to complete in order to get all the points showing us what tagged champions we will need to use so we're gonna you know theory craft a little bit without knowing the actual fight and the nodes and everything else but just kind of like looking at the most viable champions so new endgame content begins with the winter of woe 2024 seasonal endgame high difficulty super tough pull your hair out similar to eternity of pain mucho raw style content is set to begin on wednesday february the 7th with the winter of woe each step of winter of woe will consist of one versus one uh one v one quest to be completed in two week time frame here's an also an important thing you have to be i believe valiant by the start of the to, well, by the start of this thing, because I don't think if you become valiant over the course of the next two weeks that you will get the updated objective. I could be wrong on that, but I believe if you want to get the full set of rewards and if you're close to being valiant or if you can do the rank up and you're just undecided, then I'd highly suggest doing the rank up right now before this piece of content actually starts, because this will be something that uh, only Paragon and Valiant players have access to. However, Paragon players will do will not have all the objectives and will also therefore not be able to get all the rewards. If you become valiant after the first week or during the first week, you will still get better rewards, just not all of them. So uh, each fight will be accompanied by two solo objectives for Paragon summoners and an additional objective for valiant summoners. Earn points towards Winter of War milestones by completing those objectives. You'll want to complete as many as possible over the next two months to get the best rewards possible. Rewards acquisition has also changed to milestone style distribution, meaning you will not have to wait for your rewards. Now, I personally really do like this because that means every single time we're going to get a new fight or we're going to complete the objectives, we're going to get the rewards immediately. That is one of the most painful things about Eternity of Pain is just waiting for all those rewards because especially the last week last set you know of quests and objectives there's like a month limit so you do the fights let's say in first of november and then you get your reward sometime in december that was so frustrating to wait for so i'm happy that kabam changed it up please see below the full winter of war schedule future seasons of unhappiness will follow a similar structure we can see february 7th february 21st march the 6th march 20th we get the fights and the objectives and then from april the third to may the first is the final final kind of quest and then we're gonna have spring of sorrow summer of suffering and autumn of agony and here are the objectives and they're fairly straightforward they just you know complete the winter of hope part one quest with champion tag as robot gamma and sinister six which actually kind of leaves me a bit worried because uh, these are not uh, hashtags that I think are how like the most, you know, top rank up champions. But we're going to take a look at that. And uh, another thing to note, it will be pretty much impossible to double up on objectives this time around. We're going to have to tackle them one at a time because the only champion that fits like two objectives would be Rhino being since there's six and Gamma. But it's Rhino. Like... <laughs> Who has a high rank Rhino and who, you know, will be, I mean, Sweden, maybe, I don't know. And uh, here are the rewards. We can see how they are distributed here. Uh, they basically, you know, start relatively conservative with some six star shards, with some uh, uh, more six star shards and six star with Nexus Crystal. And the good, good stuff comes only later on. Here we can see the totals kind of like uh, set apart where we have tier 4 alpha fragments being significantly different and entire tier 4 alpha crystal uh, in between paragons and valiants uh, we, we're gonna get a deathless piece 7 star 6 stone crystals 7 star generic 6 stones 
Titan Crystal Shards are all vastly different than Seven Star Shards are the same. Tier 2 Primordial Dust is the same. 25% uh, Tier 6 CC Selector. This is tier 6 CC Selectors as well for Valiants. We're going to get three of those. That's quite nice. Tier 6 Basics, Tier 3 Alphas, 6 Star Abyss Nexus Crystal, 6 Star Shards, 6 Star Generic, 6 Star. So these are the total rewards and how they differ. If you are becoming Valiant somewhere in the middle, you will have a chance to get like an additional milestone somewhere along the way here. As you can see that milestone number seven is Paragon Peak. And if you miss out the first Valiant objective, actually, now that I think about it, I think if you become Valiant, because they said that there's going to be like a point spare. I'm not entirely sure. Well, either way, at the very least, if you become Valiant along the way, you will have access to extra Titan shards there for all fragments and some of the stuff here for sure as well. Right. So now that we know the champions that, uh, well, we will be using at least the groups. So let's start with the Gamma. I think the Gamma is the hashtag that people will struggle with the least because there are a ton of very, very good and popular champions like Seven Star Hulk is obviously in a basic pool. It's a very popular rank up. So a lot of people have that rank up. We have people with uh, Maestro now. Who knows? Maybe Maestro will be able to do this fight offensively as well. Then we have people who have ranked up Sasquatch and Overseer and Joe Fixit and Absman is very popular as well. So in general, I think that this is going to be one of the easier kind of hashtags uh, to make work unless the fight penalizes science characters obviously if there's like a skilled champion with shrug of mechanics and stuff like that then it could be rough but other than that uh it, it, it does look fairly manageable i also have some options here i have a rank to hulk i have a rank to overseer i have a rank to sasquatch and if need be you know i potentially can rank up some of these champions um moving forward that's the robot hashtag and that ironically is another hashtag that i'm not that confident with I do have a rank 5 Warlock and Nimrod, and that's about it. Um, I know that, you know, some people will be very, very happy to potentially flex their rank 2 Dragonmans and Guillotines, or potentially even rank 3s. Make Sentinel also is a solid pick here. And a robot hashtag is something that we see quite frequently in these uh, challenges and, you know, special objectives as such as well. So hopefully in between Warlock and Nimrod, I'll be able to squeeze through. Otherwise, I will either end up having to rank up somebody or, you know, just uh, push through with like a rank four or something. And then the final one. And the final one's kind of scary because obviously we all have Scorpion. And then and then and then. Will I see we all have Scorpion? If you don't have Scorpion, you probably could be in trouble. <laughs> okay, we get uh, realistically Scorpion and Mysterio. Uh, the two more popular champions here. Shocker has gained quite a bit of popularity and obviously a significant portion of the player base does have a seven star Shocker now because of the gifting event. And the same goes for Sandman. But there are also like obviously a lot of that. So it will be extremely crucial to see, you know, which classes are compatible with these options. I think if they had like a skill, def imagine if they put up Bullseye and you need to do it with like Gamma champions. That would probably be rough if they did bullseye. And that is going to be a crucial part as well. Which champions they are going to select to fight against. Because recently we have gotten some really nasty champions. Like, you know, in between having to fight Photon, Onslaught, Maestro, Bullseye with some very, very specific select offensive targets. Kabam definitely has that golden opportunity to make life extremely hard for all of us. And as far as, you know, these challenge modes go, so far with Eternity of Pain, at least, and the Summer of Pain, they were relatively fair. The worst thing that they made us do by far, and the one that I really disliked the fact that they did it, was when we had to fight a really annoying blade with, like, dimensional beings. That fight, it wasn't even as much as hard. It was just tedious and annoying and boring and awful in every manner i think every other matchup i remember you know somewhat fine somewhat you know doable but that blade with dimensional beings was just rough so let's hope that kabam didn't put like you know something like bullseye 
whatever here. Anyways, um, let me know what you guys think. Which are your highest ranked champions in these three hashtags? And I'm gonna catch you guys soon. Bye bye. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the next.